What is up guys? Welcome to our very first match in the NPL Majors. Now that we have made it and moved up, um, little fun fact, this is actually going to be coming out before uh, my NPL Miners Week 4 match, which you guys are going to see on Tuesday. Uh, that's already recorded, rendered, and everything, but it should have been opposite. So my Miners uh, upload is going to sound a little bit weird. It's going to sound as if uh, I haven't uploaded for the majors yet or even played for it, but we haven't pl in fact played our, our week six match technically uh, as we replaced Togavor and um, We are taking on Verd this week and his Tampa Bay Frogadiers as of course the Montreal Habsols uh, I'm gonna have Verd's team up on the right for you guys so you can see it uh, It consists of Zygarde 50% Tapu Bulu uh, Arcanine Starmie Mega Beedrill, Nihiligo, Kartana, so two Ultra Beasts, uh, Rotom, Umbreon, and Empoleon. So, uh, I'm going to try to make this short and sweet because I am a little bit late on my upload. Hopefully I get this out just on time, but anyway. Uh, we are bringing Freddy. I took all of Togue's uh, nicknames, by the way, for his mons. And uh, for the two that I swapped out, replaced, uh, I added my own nicknames. So, we've got Freddy, the Porygon 2. Eviolite, Trace, Max HP, Max uh, Fizz Def, uh, and 8 in Spadef. It's got Ice Beam and Thunderbolt, Toxic, and Recover. So this takes on his team uh, decently well. It's pretty much my only check to his Zygarde. Uh, my best possible switch in. It, it takes hits from Bulu pretty well as well. Uh, any kind of physical variant of, uh, obviously, Mega Beedrill. Kartana to some extent, although uh, Sacred Sword is going to be doing a lot regardless if he gets up to plus 1. And uh, any other physical attacker I can pretty much take on, uh, except for one specifically, which you guys are going to see in the game. But um, that's Borygon 2, EV Light, like I said. Uh, next up we got Emerson, the Diggersby. I'm running a Choice Scarf set. Uh, it's got enough speed to outspeed Choice Scarf Bulu, uh, which is also enough for Adamant Beedrill, which I expect because there's no reason for him to run Jolly against me unless he wants to cover max speed Scarf Diggersby, so... Um, that does also outspeed Adam and B. Uh, we've got Earthquake, Ice Punch, U-Turn, and Knock Off. Now, in retrospect, looking at his team, uh, Fire Punch might have been something that I should have considered over Knock Off. It's just I didn't want to have nothing to hit uh, Arcanine on the switch in. Um, and I didn't want to always lock myself into Earthquake because he has Top of Wulu. So, uh, Fire Punch also giving, of course, Zygarde a free switch in afterwards, which could be bad for my team. Uh, but looking back at it, I probably should have uh, brought Fire Punch, uh, but it's okay. Um, like I said, max attack, uh, enough speed for Beedrill, 24 in HP, pretty simple. Uh, next up, we got Cecil, the um, Latios, so Dragonium Z, actually. Uh, I've got Dragon Dance, Outrage, Earthquake, and Hidden Power Fire, so this set can pretty much sweep his entire team at plus one, except for Tapu Bulu. Everything else gets destroyed. Uh, Umbreon takes a huge amount from Outrage. And Polion doesn't immediately die to Earthquake. Like, I say it takes out his entire team, but he can intimidate me with Arcanine. Uh, Zygarde could be Haban Berry. Like, there are some factors that keep me from fully sweeping him. But very, very um, weak factors that I can deal with uh, throughout the rest of the game. So... Uh, very potent set against him. I am bringing enough speed to... Uh, I, th I think this speed ties with Kartana. I I'm not sure why I'm not 349, but it should have been this. Um, anyway, uh, I guess I didn't expect him to bring max speed Kartana, or I messed that up. Not 100% sure, but um, anyway, it, it, at worst, it speed ties with Scarf Kartana. Uh, beats everything else, like Scarf Starmie, Scarf... Uh, well, unless he's timid. Uh, beats every other Scarf on his team, beats Mega Beedrill at plus one, uh, beats plus one Zygarde, but he won't set up on me anyway, so that doesn't matter. So, uh, in plus one Nihiligo, and pretty much everything at plus one, and uh, obviously the attack stat is not the highest, but the Dragonium Z helps out a lot, HP Fire is there for, for Kartana, Earthquake is there for Empoleon, and uh, also Mega Beedrill, it does a lot, so I don't have to lock myself into Outrage. Uh, so it's a pretty straightforward Mon, Cecil, the uh, Latios. Moving on, we have Frostbite, the Alolan Ninetales. Now, this is a set I contemplated over uh, quite a bit. Um, did consider not bringing Aurora Veil. I felt like Substitute was definitely uh, a good call because I forced a lot of switches among things like Tapu Bulu, Zygarde, uh, potentially uh, Kartana if it's scared of me for whatever reason. 
um, star me if it doesn't have enough uh, power to oko me. It doesn't want to take freeze dry. Um, pretty much a lot on his team. Like uh, mainly Umbreon though. Umbreon is a big obstacle in my way for sweeping with uh, Latios if I want to accomplish that in the late game. And Nine Tails is pretty much a free switch on Umbreon every single time. I can get off a sub and then get off an Aurora Veil and then switch up. So. Uh, I get an extra turn of Veil, uh, a turn where I don't have to predict, and I can come in four times on rocks, so it's not a huge deal, and uh, I don't want to waste a turn nasty plotting and have him go into something faster, and then just be forced out without a Veil, so that's why Substitute is there. Uh, it was originally nasty plot, but I, like I said, I don't want to be forced out by something faster. Uh, Blizzard is nice, again, for things like uh, Zygarde, Bulu, um... Just his team in general, everything but Nihiligo can take hit, uh, can't really take hits from this thing. Maybe Empoleon as well. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much Alola Ninetales. Uh, the speed is self-explanatory. It's faster than Zygarde, max speed Zygarde, uh, max special attack, and then the rest in HP. Then we have, this is probably the most interesting set. Uh, we've got Mega Mawile, Lucy, uh, max HP, max defense, impish nature. Um, so I'm pretty much rocking a fully defensive... Uh, Mega Mawile, specifically for his Mega Beedrill, because that thing is a threat, uh, as well as Carton, uh, not Carton, excuse me, Nihiligo. Uh, Nihiligo can't really touch this unless it's carrying, like, HP Ground or HP Fire, uh, or anything like that. So, uh, I can tank its hits fairly well. Uh, it's not gonna appreciate Knockoff. Now, as you can see, I'm only rocking Fire Fang and Knockoff. Um, I'm pretty much forfeiting the ability to have Play Rough. Uh, but that's because I need to be able to hit Arcanine. I need to be able to hit uh, Empoleon. I have something to take advantage of uh, of Umbreon already. So I don't always need uh, Play Rough. Plus his Zygarde can run things like Camouflage. And, um, I, I more so need something to hit Arcanine. Because Arcanine is going to be his main response to my uh, Mawile. If you know our team, you know that Arcanine doesn't do too well. Like, uh, Sorry, Arcanine does it super well. Uh, against this team specifically because I have no fire switch-ins and the only things that do switch into fire attacks are super weak to toxic So I expect him to run flare blitz toxic. I saw it in my mocks I, I it was the first thing that came to mind. I was like he's gonna bring Arcanine and he's gonna bring toxic on it There's just no way so uh, I have this here for Mega Beedrill stealth rocks are gonna be really nice for his team in general uh, like I said the Mega Beedrill the uh, the Arcanine Pretty much everything breaks some sash sashes potentially and I do have rest on here uh, and I can take a few hits from Mega Beedrill and if I can potentially get off a rest like I don't have sleep talk but uh, if I can get off a rest and I can keep coming in on things like Bulu or Cartana and taking like zero damage then uh, I can eventually whittle down his team to the point where something like my next mon can sweep up so last mon on the team is gonna be Tornado Therian uh, we've got a Hurricane Heat Wave, Hidden Power Ice, U-Turn, Choice Scarf set. We have enough speed for... This one's EV'd correctly. It's, it's got enough speed for Max Speed Cartana at plus one. Um, if it, he runs a speed boosting variant or if he's Choice Scarfed, of course. Uh, max Special Attack, 96 in HP uh, with a minus attack nature. Now, Hurricane is a pretty spammable move against this team. Uh, other than on Hiligo and uh, Empoleon. Nihiligo doesn't like me switching into Diggersby. It doesn't like me switching into Mawile. Uh, it doesn't like Porygon coming in. So, um, I can't really see Nihiligo coming to this game in the first place. But if it does, I have answers for it. So, um, either way, Hurricane is pretty spammable across his team. Heatwave is a very good late game win con. As you can see, he's got uh, Bulu that's weak to it, Mega Beedrill, uh, Kartana. Empoleon takes a little bit of damage, so things that would typically be alive in the end game, I have an answer for. Uh, Hidden Power Ice, of course, uh, Zygarde is a huge threat, and I need something to be able to revenge it, potentially. Like, I, if I get one hit off, HP Ice can do a lot, um, and I'm faster than plus one, so if he's a Dragon Dance variant, uh, I only have to worry about E-Speed, realistically, and I have 96 HP investment, so I can take one E-Speed at plus one after rocks, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, and you turn of course for momentum. So it's a pretty straightforward team We're gonna hop right into the game because I gotta get this out very soon and uh, we'll see how it went <clears throat> All right, so as you guys can see 
Uh, Verd brought the Zygarde Mega Beedrill, Tapu Bulu, um, that is an Arcanine, Cartana, and Empoleon. So, uh, a lot of what I expected. Empoleon was kind of interchangeable with, um, with Umbreon, I feel, because he was very, very weak to Dragon Dance Latios. Uh, I don't know if he knows this, but it could pretty much run through his team. If I had Ice Beam maybe over HP Fire, it would be a little bit easier, but, um, other than that, it can just run through. But, yeah, anyway, we're gonna get right into it. He's gonna lead off with Empoleon as I lead with Mawile, and he reveals to be Defiant Empoleon immediately, right off the bat. And I know Verd doesn't make mistakes with his abilities, so I know that this is correct and that he's a physically attacking Empoleon immediately on turn one, so I'm like, oh no, what have I done? Uh, I couldn't risk him leading with Mega Beedrill. It was just too, um, too potent of a threat. Uh, that or Zygarde, like getting off an Intimidate on a lot of his team, as you can see, f um, pretty much actually six of his out of his six attackers are physical. At first I thought it was five, but his Empoleon is a, phys a physical attacker as well. That's going to make things a little bit harder because I'm going to uh, get off a Defiant boost on his Empoleon. I'm not going to take too much from the Waterfall. I'm going to get off a huge knockoff right here. And I think what ends up happening is that Verd fears the Sucker Punch, and he's going to switch out into his Arcanine as I'm able to actually get up my rocks. So this is looking pretty good. As uh, Now I'm going to switch out straight into my Torn, and he's going to go for a Toxic. Now this is what I expected. Uh, like I said, I didn't, want, I didn't really want my P2 getting Toxic this early, uh, as I still need it as a response for his Zygarde. Now I make a little bit of a misplay here and go for Hurricane. Um, I what I should have done was you turned out because I had a feeling you wasn't going to stay in. The problem is I didn't have a great response to his Arcanine. Uh, my best thing to come in there probably would have been Diggersby. But if he decided to double status his um, his Arcanine and run Will-O-Wisp, Diggersby was pretty much out of commission for the rest of the game. And as, as you can see, it's got a pretty good matchup. Uh, it can Ice Punch two to three of his members, and it can Earthquake four uh, for really heavy damage. So I didn't want my Diggersby getting burned. Uh, and he pretty much didn't risk uh, a lot. He could also Morning Sun on that turn, which is something that I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of players up in Majors do. Um, turn one, they'll just scout the attack by recovering. I guess he didn't want to risk the confusion, um, which makes a lot of sense. So uh, he switches out into his Empoleon. Now Hurricane's actually going to do a good amount of damage. It's going to do 28%. The problem is Hurricane is a move that misses. So I am going to miss my following Hurricane, and the problem is I'm on a timer, so he's going to actually get up his rocks. I'm going to fall to 63%, uh, and I don't want to take more Toxic damage, so I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to go into P2. As he fires, uh, I'm going to get his Defiant. He's going to desire to fire off a knockoff, which is a really good play. I lose my Eviolite, but as long as his Zygarde's not banded, it sh shouldn't be too big of a deal. He goes for Waterfall, I go for Recover, I'm um, back up to full. Goes for another Waterfall. He's going to flinch me on this turn. Not so bad. I can just go for another Recover. He reveals Swords Dance. I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of bad. Uh, so I'm going to take, like, 45-ish percent this turn. I could just go for a Thunderbolt and knock out his Empoleon. But I get flinched again. And I'm dead, essentially. I live with 3%, and I get flinched again. And uh, this Empoleon is going to end up taking me out with three Waterfalls, which is huge. Uh, as now I'm going to bring out my Alola Ninetales. Retrospect, I probably should have attacked here, but I decided to go for an Aurora Veil, because uh, it's going to help out the rest of the team. However, I only have uh, three turns left on it, but he's going to die to Hail anyway, so I figured, you know what, let's get up a Veil while we're at it. He goes into Mega Beedrill. This is nice for me, because uh, he pretty much puts himself in range of uh, plus one Earthquake from Mega Latios 100% of the time by doing this. Now he's going to U-turn. Obviously, it's going to do nothing to my Mega Mawile. Problem is, Arcanine is still alive and kicking. Uh, I only have three turns left of Veil, and I am forced out on this turn, which is not good for me, uh, as he's going to actually go for a Snarl, and I'm going to uh, predict him to want to uh, not go for a Fire move on this turn, predicting my Latios, or um, or even my Diggersby could have come in pretty easily there. He goes for Morning Sun, Hail is up, so that's nice. I'm going to go for Rest and get back all my health, uh, because I have to at this point. I can't really take hits in, this, in the condition I'm in right now. Uh, and what I should have done here was gone into Diggersby, which I do. Awesome, okay. So, I get in my Diggersby against his, uh, his Arcanine, which is slowly recovering up 25% per turn, as he's now going to switch out into his Tapu Bulu, knowing that he can't really take a, an Earthquake from my Diggersby. Now, I wasn't aggressive enough this game, and I knew that the Bulu was coming out, but 
as you can see, my team doesn't handle Arcanine very well. It's got Snarl, it's got Flare Blitz, more than likely, and it's also got, uh, well, he could be a special attacking set flamethrower, but he's um, also got Toxic, and my team does not like this Mon. So, pretty much, um, I'm going to play it safe. Uh, every single time with Diggersby and go for Earthquake. Now, this pretty much gives his Bulu a free switch in. Luckily, I did heal up my Mawile and he just gave me Grassy Terrain, so that's quite nice. Gonna bring that in. He's going to double out into his Zygarde, which is not too bad because I can just bring in my um, my Alolan Ninetales essentially and sack it. Uh, or I can go into, into Torn because I am uh, Choice Scarfed. I am going to go into Ninetales. I think he is just going to attack on this turn, as he is going to go for 1,000 waves. So, that pretty much reveals to me that he's not any kind of offense, like super offensive set, he, coupled with the fact that he has leftovers. So, I'm going to go into Tornadus. I'm not going to go for HP Ice, though. I'm going to go for Hurricane. Uh, it only ends up doing 41%, but uh, Verticlix Camouflage and becomes a Grass type. I guess for, he forgot about his own terrain. Um, and Hurricane's gonna become super effective on the following turn, so, uh, granting I connect, I should be able to knock this thing out, which I do, so thank goodness, a Zygarde is out of the way, however, my Torn is now sitting at, uh, quite a low amount of health, 41%, uh, it's looking really good in the endgame, like, I mentioned this in the team builder, Heatwave has a very good late game cleaning potential, the problem is, Arcanine is still here, and Arcanine is annoying, my Hail is still up, he can't really um, go for the morning sun and get back a lot of health, so um, that's that's one plus, but Arcanine being alive is bad. He's going to go here for the flamethrower, and he's going to deal quite a bit of damage to Diggersby, actually. I was, I was kind of surprised that it did that much. 45% uh, and I'm going to take hail damage. Now, once again, Bulu is pretty obvious. But I am just going to click Earthquake because if I kill the Arcanine, my uh, Tornadus sweeps pretty much guaranteed. Uh, a few heat waves and everything drops. But he goes back into Bulu once again, uh, and I'm going to be forced out once again. Back into my Mega Mawile. He makes a little bit of an over prediction here. Um, my Mawile does come in on his Horn Leech, that does uh, virtually nothing. And I think he is. No, he's not leftovers. Uh, he goes back into his Arcanine once again, as uh, I sh probably should have doubled here, expecting this, but I didn't want to catch like a Swords Dance on the Switch or anything like that. So he's going to get in his Arcanine for free. Uh, I'm going to go into my Diggersby knowing that I can potentially take one more Flamethrower, as he's actually going to go for Morning Sun, and uh, I'm going to get back up to 49%, which should be just out of range as well. And here I'm going to go for Earthquake. Now, uh, he goes for Flamethrower. This is a This is a huge misplay here. So, he's up to 49%, right, guys? His rocks, br my rocks, excuse me, bring him b down to 24% when he comes back in. What I should have done was actually calc how much um, Tornadus, I, I didn't do this, uh, how much Tornadus did with Heat Wave to, a, to an Arcanine to see if he could switch it in. Because if he can't, then Latios can deal with it. He's a Snarl variant, but I'm Dragon Dance physical. So, it doesn't really matter if he Snarls me, uh, I get up a Dragon Dance uh, post Intimidate, like a after he's already used up his Intimidate on something else. Uh, I get in my Latios, I go for Dragon Dance, and I 2 it KO with Earthquake. And his Snarl's not doing that much. It's not a very powerful move, it's not Stab. So I get up to plus one, I Earthquake the Arcanine. If he switches out, rocks are still up, it doesn't really matter. Something else has to take an Earthquake. Essentially, if I attack this Arcanine right here with Earthquake, and he switches out into Bulu, it's not as bad this time, because his Arcanine's not as healthy. Every other time, it was bad because uh, his Bulu was really healthy, and so was his Arcanine. So, I make a very, very big misplay on this turn, and I end up sacking my Win Kong in this game, being Tornadus, <laughs> and he's gonna go for Flamethrower. I didn't expect him to stay in. Uh, I expected him to switch out into Bulu. Uh, I would gain the momentum that I needed and be able to hurricane and kill something on his team, essentially. So I end up taking a flamethrower, which puts me in range of dying to rocks plus poison, uh, even if I get my regenerator, I believe. So uh, that's I, I gain 1% every time I switch out. So I end up hurricaning the Arcanine, but the Arcanine is gone, which is cool. So I don't have to deal with that thing anymore. 
and he's gonna send in his Mega Beedrill as I send in my Latios. Not great for me, gotta switch out because this is my only remaining win con at this point. Gonna go into Diggersby. Had I gone into Diggersby first, uh, I would have actually been able to outspeed uh, the Beedrill uh, as well as the Bulu and the Kartana it seems because uh, his Beedrill was, n was adamant in fact. Uh, and the problem was if his Kartana came in and it was a choice scarf set and locked itself into Smart Strike, I could straight up lose. Because Latios can take a neutral Smart Strike, but it can't take a plus one Smart Strike. So uh, I pretty much had to bank on him going into Kartana rather than Beedrill. I didn't expect Mega Beedrill to come in uh, because I thought that he had figured by this point that my Diggersby was scarfed, but it seems like he didn't. Um, and Bulu's gonna come in. And I'm going to bring in my uh, Mawile, obviously. Now, this actually puts him in a pretty precarious situation because we saw how much Horn Leech did before. It didn't do too much, and I could wake up at any second. So, he's actually going to switch out into his Kartana, knowing that he's got a boosted Leaf Blade right now. He's going to try to take advantage of it. Uh, the second I wake up, I'm going to be able to go for a Fire Fang. As long as I connect it, I'm good. So, I'm going to go for a Fire Fang, and it's going to knock out the Kartana. So, that's dealt with. That's cool. Now he's going to go into Beedrill, and uh, if he's adamant, the roll on um, Drill Run is between, I think, 45 to 53, something like that, uh, to my spread. And if he's Jolly, a max roll is the only thing that kills me. So I pretty much have to bank on him being Jolly uh, and being able to get off a... Uh, I think I end up going for Rest on this turn. Because if he is Jolly, then uh, my chances are better of living uh, a couple of drill runs, plus he can miss. So I would be able to get up to a decent amount of health, and then be able to Fire Fang potentially live Bulu's next Horn Leech, and then be able to Fire Fang that as well. So I'm going to go for rest. But he is adamant, as I expected him to be. So, uh, to be, uh, shoutouts to Adam. Uh, <laughs> so, unfortunately, we are going to lose to this Mega Beedrill. Mainly because I sacked my win con on a turn that I was pretty sure that he would switch out into Bulu. Uh, if, had he let his uh, Arcanine go down there, it was pretty much the Tornadus show at that point. Nothing dealt with Tornadus. Uh, and if he went into Kartana, then, I mean, it could have still been Scarfed. But I still had my Latios as a backup option to be able to knock it out. Uh, because if it is Scarfed... Um, it gets a plus one boost, but it doesn't necessarily knock me out with whatever it locks itself into. Like, it's not necessarily going to lock into Smart Strike. Uh, plus, my Torn is faster than a Scarf Kartana, by the way. So, I can just uh, lock myself into Heat Wave. And I believe that it was a roll on a max HP Bulu at that point. But all I needed was one U-turn. So, if after Arcanine went down, if he went into Kartana, knocked out my Diggersby, then I went into Torn, and I clicked Heat Wave, uh, nothing can switch in. If his Bulu comes in, I switch out into Latios, I fire off an HP fire, and I leave his Bulu in range of Heat Wave, and Heat Wave ends up knocking out Bulu as well as the Mega Beedrill. So, that would have been GG, uh, but unfortunately I made the stupid misplay of uh, sacking my Tornadus to his Arcanine, thinking that he would actually want to keep something that could deal with my Tornadus. Uh, but Ver didn't seem to want to do that, so... Uh, so be it, we end up losing 2-0, it's not a huge loss, um, I'm still getting used to the team, it's a pretty bad team, I'm not gonna lie guys, um, as much as I tried to fix it with Pangoro and Alolan Ninetales, it's just really, it really sucks, um, and I can't get over how much this team sucks, but, uh, next season we are gonna draft our own team, don't worry, I'm gonna draft things that I like, uh, in fact, on this team, the, the only Mons that I like personally uh, are probably Diggersby and Alola Ninetales. Everything else I'm not a huge fan of. So if that just gives you an idea of how much of my team I actually enjoy using. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up, guys. That's going to be this week's uh, battle for the NPL. Of course, this was week six. Uh, if you get a chance, go and check out Verd's side of the battle. It will be in the description down below as well as every other link for the NPL, everything NPL related, as usual, just as we did with Miners. Uh, once again, just as a little reminder, uh, and the NPL Miners video that is coming out on Tuesday is going to sound a little bit weird because it should have been out before this one, but we got a one week break in Miners, and that's going to be my last video for Miners as well, so just keep that in mind when you guys watch that, if you do watch that. 
And uh, yeah, that's gonna wrap it up, guys. Uh, Shoutouts to to Verd, GG. Uh, great battle, great game. Uh, I look forward to playing you again in the future. Hopefully, we don't have uh, another situation like that in Polion flinching my Porygon all the way down. <laughs> but um, and uh, we have a little bit of a cleaner match, but it's, it still was a good game regardless. Uh, I wish I could have played you with a better team ultimately, but that's gonna be it, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Go and check out all those links once again. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.